Hey everyone, um, you might be watching this a little before everyone else does. I have to hit the go live button on this particular stream uh, to keep it in and in, in check and stuff. So hopefully everything works out well uh, and the things don't go quite too funky. So hopefully we'll get this right in just a second. A few people in chat just saying hello. It'll be a thing. So here we go. Oh, there it is, everybody. Hey everybody, I'm Ramon Mejia, again from the Little Bitty Podcast. Uh, get this nice thing started as soon as we can, so a few people hopefully would be joining the stream. Uh, in the meantime, we can enjoy some nice music and uh, maybe me dancing. Uh, yeah, hey everybody, I'm Ramon here again, if you've just joined the stream live uh, or a little bit late, happy to see everyone who's in the chat room, have a uh, Gabriel Rathway hanging out already, uh, hopefully some new folks are going to be coming in to, to hang out and stuff. Uh, if you happen to be watching this and you want to share this on other pages, feel free to do so, I'm happy to chat with you and see you at this point. Um, uh, this is the first Facebook live stream I've done for the R.A. Mejia thing here, and hopefully some folks uh, will be joining us to give questions, answers. I, I have plans uh, to do like giveaways, like um, audiobook codes, some signed books that I have just sitting behind me um, for folks who live in the United States. That's really going to be good. Um, don't ship to internationally. It's just way too expensive. So sorry, guys, if you're international, you get my love. Uh, I just... I can't share prices to you. It's too sensitive. Uh, but anybody who's in chat room happens to be hanging out watching, feel free to come by and say hello and do some chat stuff. Uh, so, um, so as of right now, though, uh, it's just kind of me hanging out, doing things and checking chat rooms and stuff. Uh, so there you go. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to see some folks who are doing things. Uh, so, yep, there's me doing stuff on the stream. So, I'm hanging out right here. Um, yeah, see, I see some folks. There he is. What's up, bro? That's, hey, that's all for me. So, uh, it's good that I will get to see that stuff at some point. Uh, so, hey, everybody. Uh, there's Dave Walmart in chat room saying hello as well. Hey, Dave. Nice to see you, man. Um, so uh, most of this is just going to be essentially me talking to myself, I guess, unless people start showing up in here. Um, but uh, this is mostly the idea that um, I do a lot of stuff for podcasts, uh, for the Little Bitty Podcast. I also do that one as well. You saw the picture earlier. If you saw the beginning of the live stream of me just goofing around uh, dancing, I do that every single podcast just to get me amped up in the mood. And I, I love Little Bitty generally. Um, it's, it's definitely a huge passion for me uh, in life. Um, but I'm also a writer. I, I, um, written a couple of books, uh, under like R.M. Mejia. That's the writer name I use. Uh, my real name is Ramon, of course. You see, if you see me in a podcast, you know who I am, uh, as far as like my real name, it's not like it's hidden and stuff. Um, but I write, uh, for this novel, Adventures on Tarot, uh, and that's one series I write. I also write Project Alpha. Um, that's another series that I've written. Uh, that one came up more recently, December. I have book three that I'm currently writing right now, folks. Um, so uh, it's 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 still a work in progress. It's about like 98-ish percent done. I have about three more chapters to write uh, in that particular series. And then I can set it off to editors and to beta readers. And then hopefully it'll be a couple of weeks till it's all finished and polished and out to people for read to read. Uh, and a little later in the stream, I'll, of course, be... We'll be doing the cover reveal uh, for you folks who are watching live in this thing. Um, yeah, there is a bit of a time lag here. I know uh, people in chat were like, hey, there's a time lag. Yeah, um, that's sort of the medium as it is. Um, I don't know if it's exactly two minutes, but there is like a bit of a, a bit of a time lag. It's usually about, I think, minute-ish at most. So if you guys are watching it's in, in live again, and I don't exactly look at your comments immediately um there it is i might have to like stop the stream and redo it if it's like super super bad for anybody in particular so if it is like really super bad um for folks in chat you just have to let me know that yes it's super bad and i will stop this one and i'll do another one and hopefully that one will look a little bit better and smoother uh but this is again one of those things about the nature of the internet so uh let's see 
Uh, so, yep, there we go. Um, so, any questions? I need to, uh, Gabriel Rothwick says, I need to upgrade from from dial up. He says, This isn't drinking with Charles. I shouldn't be stuttering so much. Uh, so, I'm you drinking, Dave. So, there, it looks like the chat room is, is entertaining itself uh, at this point. <laughs> Uh, so that's super duper entertaining. I don't know if, let me see if I'll, I can show you guys what I'm actually looking at. Uh, as far as like the chat room set side of it. Yeah. Yeah. Here you go. These guys uh, on the screen there, I'm watching myself, watch myself in live chat, uh, just so everybody can, can see it there. So, uh, it is totally, there you go. So it, it, these guys are very entertaining and they will entertain themselves, um, from on, all on their own in chat room. So there you go. Uh, so hopefully that clears up. Otherwise, I'll just have to, you know, stop that live stream, do a little bit better there. So it's it's it gets a little meta occasionally. Uh, so uh, that that's just the nature of like a live stream. So I guess uh, anybody in chat room has questions, feel free to ask. Um, otherwise, I I can just kind of talk a little bit uh, on my own. Uh, actually, I actually have a few things coming up. A um, few author interviews that I'm doing with some other folks on the Liturgy podcast side uh, should be talking to um, some good folks recently. Maybe uh, Gary Rothway will be hoping, hopefully, be able to join the show at some point uh, to do an author interview with me uh, and some other folks. Uh, Harmon Cooper, uh, hopefully, I'll make, be able to make plans with him to do that as well at some point. Um, on the author side, it really is just mostly just I read, I write, I do some stuff. Uh, um, another author or another person in the community uh, is planning to do his own kind of interview thing um, called Game Reads, and he sent me some nice questions. I figured, oh, these are nice to, to ask to him. Uh, they do bring up some good, very good, interesting, like, fan questions, though, that I was just, like, writing, you know, from notes. I'm like, hey, this is this might work for my own thing, because I've, I've done an author interview before where I interview myself. Um, it's on YouTube. You can go check it out on our Geek Bites podcast page um, if you want to go watch me interview myself. Uh, it, it's quite entertaining. You can also see it on the Facebook, I'm sorry, the um, Little Bridge Podcast website page as well, where it's me asking myself questions and answering them. Uh, it's a very meta kind of thing. So uh, I'll, I'll talk about the questions I have here, and uh, hopefully there's some other things. Uh, let's see, Boppy's here. Um, yay. I, I, yeah, so. Oh, there they was like, oh, Bobby's here. Uh, Dave Omar says... Uh, so Ramon, your time and your hair and makeup paid off good. Good looking. Thanks, man. Um, Aaron Rollin Holloway asked, uh, how did you get into Lit RPG? Uh, so there is that. I can't see all the back questions there, but uh, I will ask that. It says, I got into Liberty because I'm a fan. Uh, I was looking through Urban Fantasy at the time, and I couldn't find anything new to read, and I found some some stuff that was like maybe game-related. Uh, it was uh, the Reborn series, uh, and that was really my first introduction to to Lit RPG. It was really super fun, um, and it was like a it was like a serial series where it's like you know 100 pages, like five or six entries at that point, and then continue on uh, later on into like I think 13 books eventually. Um, it was it was just like the thing that I didn't realize that I loved that I was missing in my life. To be honest, um, it well, it combined fantasy stories with RPG game mechanics, and I've been an RPG nerd my whole life, playing video games, tabletop games, um, a lot more video games though, um, and just kind of immersing myself in that kind of, those things where I'm a gamer, uh, and, but at the same time, I love sci-fi and fantasy stories, and that was my introduction, and from there, it was just this huge dive into the rabbit hole, uh, looking up anything on Amazon, um, Kindle Unlimited was my friend, uh, but eventually that really ran out quickly, because at that point in History, in literary history, there wasn't a lot coming out uh, on Amazon, I should say. So I went into Royal Road, um, a bunch of translated stuff <laughs> on the darker, on, on the little corners of the internet. Uh, novel update was amazing, as a bunch of other places. And, and eventually, I got so full of like, oh, these amazing stories, and they're just not enough. Hey, I'll put my own out, um, see if anybody reads it. And that was like a whole year of my life where I was working full time, uh, but doing you know my off hours you know, between sleep shifts, because I had a couple of day jobs, as well as a night job, um, you know, wrote a thing, uh, got it edited, uh, had my wife help me do editing in, in exchange for foot massages, it was kind of a fun thing to do, as far as like a couple connecting thing, uh, but that's besides the point, but the book got finished, it got published, and it came out as Adventures in Terror, book number one, uh, that's that's the baby, and I found, uh, um, you know, some folks who were nice enough to help me find a good cover artist. Uh, Blaze Corbin introduced me to his, and she was like reasonably right. I'm like, oh, this one is awesome. I'm going to use her in half sense, and she does amazing cover art. Um, and then eventually, 
people enjoyed it. I was like, oh, someone's reading it. Um, and then more people read it. And then they hit like top 100 Amazon as like the first book I ever like met, wrote and stuff. So it's, uh, it was something that I was su- super surprised to be successful. And so I made an audiobook out of it because that, I'm a huge audiobook reader as well. Uh, and that was awesome. So, uh, let's see. How many hours do you write versus reading books for a podcast? Uh, all kinds of folks in the, in the chat room. Keith, everybody, everybody, hello. I want to give a quick shout out to everybody. Uh, Gabe Rathley asks, how many hours do you read versus writing for your books? Um, the, uh, oh God, that's a lot. Uh, the podcast with reading and reviewing is about easy, a 40 hour a week job. Like it really is. Um, it's just, I read about, I don't know, somewhere between seven and 10 books a week at this point, And they're not like all super small, <laughs> like some of them are like a little small, like 100 pages or less, but a lot of them are like three or 400 pages. Uh, and so that d- does take a lot of devotion of time. Um, writing is pr- definitely a lot less. Like I should do more writing that pays the bills at this point. I, I eventually became a full-time writer after, um, after I could show <laughs> essentially my wife that this was not a one-off that people were going to hopefully read these things <laughs> And it wasn't just going to make a one thing. Um, so after Project Alpha came out and people still were buying things that I wrote, um, like being full time uh, and that time, I just I read now and I write and that's kind of it. Um, and there you go. But I definitely read and review more as for the podcast. And because and that most because I'm always going to be a fan first. I'm always uh, dedicated as I'm a reader, then I'm a podcaster and then I'm a writer last. Uh, and that's just the nature of of, of this particular universe for me, man. Um, so there you go. Uh, more questions for the audience. Aaron H- Roland Holland asks, how many words are your books when you feel they are ready for self-publication when the story is done? That's kind of it. Um, I'm, I'm kind of a wordy writer, Aaron. Um, it is, uh, it's, I'm, I'm, I just, I, I'm not a professional writer by any means. I'm definitely amateur, amateur hour. I went to school for like math and science stuff. Uh, I'm definitely not writing. So writing is a very challenging thing for me. Most of my books have come out to be like 500 pages, which is approximately like 150,000 words. Some a little bit more. I think one went to like 170. Book two of Adventures in Terra. Book three might be longer. I don't know. I just, whatever, whatever it takes to like get that story there and get all the stuff that I want to put in there. That's how long it takes. I, I've tried. I mean, I, I really did. I, I tried to like, like, okay, I have a hundred thousand words to say my bit. Um, and it didn't work out. Like I ran out a hundred thousand words, like this thing, like midway through the story. I was like, Oh, my story is not done. Um, I guess I'll just keep writing. Uh, and that's just unfortunately how I write. And that's mostly because again, I'm an, I'm an absolute new writer, amateur, um, I'm sure more professional writers who have done this for like years and decades have better tools to shrink their storytelling. I'm just not one of them. I just, I tell the story that I love to, that I want to read. So there you go. Um, Gabriel Rathway thinks that I look tired. Sorry. Uh, I, I stay up until three in the morning, sometimes reading and reviewing novels and then trying to get writing done at the same time. So maybe that's it. I, I could just meet me coughing. Um, Dave Wilmarth and chart mass. Um, Reading, writing, meh. His important question is, are I wearing pants? I am wearing pants. Um, it's hard for you to tell because you only see me from the waist up. Um, but I'm wearing pants and clean underwear. And, and, and that's mostly just because I'm actually wearing, um, um, what are they called? The the nighttime wear, the, um, not joggers and stuff, but like nighttime sleepy comfy pants. I forget the word. And I'm a writer. Um, um, but there you go. Uh Let's see. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm wearing those below deck. And it's only because it's cold in California for the second. Um, it's usually pretty warm. So there you go. But there you go. Behind the look. Um, Gabe Rather, his pants are overrated. Uh, let's see. Gabe Gushan says in chat room, Reborn was his first liturgy as well that led to my book series. That's that's very interesting. I actually get um, on Amazon tagged with his a lot, maybe because they're so similar uh, or at least like genre wise, like they start out the same and it's not completely a coincidence. Like I said, I'm an amateur writer. So like I had to start somewhere and I think I probably pulled a little bit from, from his beginning uh, a little too much, but everything after that just really does become original uh, kind of concepts and stuff. Um, uh, other people also said, Oh, mine starts out a little similar to Aileron's as well. Um, Aileron Kong's uh, t- series. But again, I'm an amateur. Uh, we all have to start somewhere as a, as a, as a starting point. And I thought that was kind of a cool way to also give a nod to the stories that I, I love 
um, stories that help inspire me to to do my own thing and write a story that came out of my brain. So uh, I I always give credit to all the many wonderful authors that I've read in the genre this, uh, over the years uh, that have inspired me and led me to to this place as far as like being a writer and a reader and also a podcaster and a promoter of, of this genre in the whole. So there we go. Uh, let me see. I don't, ah, let's see. I can share this. I'm just like realizing, Hmm, I, I'm trying to figure out how to share this conversation to somebody else. I'm like, Oh, I wait, I can just like press the button that says share on Facebook and it'll show up there. <laughs> I feel, honestly feel silly, like not being able, to, not realizing that it was that easy uh, to do. I don't normally do a lot of live streams. I record generally the podcast um, on, you know, beforehand cameras, lights, and action, and have a bunch of things to say. So just kind of going off the cup is is a little bit more challenging. Um, I don't know how to actually share like the link of this directly. I wish that I could, but you know, it is what it is. Some some folks are here, and I'm, I'm appreciative of everyone that has actually here in, in chat. Uh, I can totally say that I can give Gabriel Rothwick a, a signed copy of one of those books. I'll mail it to him. Look, he, he's a winner. Uh, so there you go. Uh, Aaron Roland Holloway. Also, you can choose to be uh, get a, a prize of a signed copy or um, an audiobook um, credit, if you like. Uh, so Aaron Roland Holloway, just you know, message me your, your information and I'd be more than happy to send it to you. So there we go. All kinds of great stuff. So let's see. Uh, J.R. Hanley. Hey, nice man. Good to see you. Uh, it was really fun chatting with him. J.R. Hanley uh, does his own podcast. Uh, very nice gentleman. Um, if I'm remembering everybody's name correctly, I think. Uh, so he, he, he's the nice guy. He says he can't. In chat room, he says, can't call yourself a writer and wear pants. Lies. There you go. So all kinds of great stuff. Uh, so there you go. Um, so all kinds of nice things. Uh, so like I said, more folks in chat, happy to talk to you about the nice things. There we go. Oh, look, all these comments. Oh, they're there. See, I just had to press a button on the thing and I could see all your comments. Um, and I wouldn't have to like wait for them to be like pop up a little bit better. So hey, everybody, Keith McGill, he's here as well. Look, man, all these people that like were watching, I, I totally missed them because uh, I forgot to press a button on the live stream. Oh, look, my Aunt Martha's here. Hey, Aunt Martha. Uh, nice to see you. She joined. That's very nice of her. Uh, let's see what else we got. Oh, there we go. Charles Dean. Hey, man. Yeah, Charles Dean is the author of the War of Attorney series as a bathroom night, um, which I originally thought was titled The Bathroom Night. He was very nice to correct me about it uh, in, an, in a very polite email. And we became friends ever since. Uh, he's also the author of the Merchant of Tikva series. Uh, so all kinds of folks here. Dave Wilmarth is in the chat room as well. Author of a bunch of good books, um, Greystone Chronicles of Greystone, or is it the Greystone Chronicles? I always forget. Um, but also uh, a new series which slips my mind at the moment. So lots of author friends. Uh, I've kind of made friends with a lot of people from the liturgy community just because I again I do the liturgy podcast, and um, you know I do author interviews, and so I get a chance to talk to a bunch of amazing people who have also helped help me to be a better writer. Just like having conversations with them about writing styles in particular, or else like how they do things, or how they set up their writing schedule. Um, I once talked to Michael Chatfield, and I was like, and that was an amazing conversation about like how he he puts out like a book a month. Uh, so that was always fun. But I have tons of tons of super amazing writer friends as well. So thanks guys for, for joining chat because uh, without you, this is a, a much more lonely conversation. <laughs> I'll admit it is. Uh, let's see. Let's see. So yep, Charles came out. Yeah. Yeah. Charles says he, he's had a hard time figuring how to find the place. I'm like, yeah, I, I don't do this. I don't do live streams very often. I usually use YouTube because it's much for me, um, easier medium to work with. I just didn't really use Facebook live uh, that often. Um, so I, I, I don't know. I, I had to figure out how to share links, look at comments too, man. So no, no problems there. Um, oh yeah, I guess Charles is also mocking my internet connection. Yeah. That's just the kinds of consequence of I'm, I'm using OBS at the same time. So I can show up pictures, uh, and things like that. And, uh, apparently it, it slows things down a little bit. Oh, and here's the nice cover, which I just putting up for, um, for adventures on terror book three. If you guys, when I go to, I'll leave this up for you guys to watch. Um, but that is the actual cover for the next book that's coming out, hopefully in the next couple weeks when, you know, I finish writing it. Um, it's, it's a work in progress. Like someone 98% done. I got like three, 
three scenes to write. Um, one of them was a big combat scene, then like the resolution scenes. I'm hoping to get Charles Dean in on um, beta reader <laughs> uh, action um, before you know he he gets too busy um, finishing up War of Eternus. I know he's finishing up that now, War of Eternus too, uh, so he can kind of point out all the little things that I'm doing wrong or things that'll hopefully make the story better. Because he honestly really good beta reader, one of the best that I've ever had because he's an author, um, but he's also a fan of like, you know, of, of the genre. So he's more than happy to point out things that don't, don't make sense structurally or story things that I would have never thought of because I'm, I'm a, I'm a game nerd definitely, but writing's really new for me. Uh, so there you go. Um, there you go. Uh, Charles and Dean Darn says in the chat room, he can easily call yourself a writer and wear pants. He does it all the time. Make sure the ego of other authors stay in check. So, there you go. And J.R. Haley also says hi to my Aunt Martha, uh, who may or may not still be in chat. So there you go. So all kinds of good folks. Hopefully uh, the stream isn't too bad. Um, again, once once it's actually all finished, um, it'll be a much cleaner stream. Again, that's one of the things about Facebook Live is that whenever I try to use it, um, it stutters a little bit. Uh, here and there. Uh, so it's, uh, and that could just because I'm using OBS as like the medium between them. Uh, I, if I just did it directly, uh, it would probably be cleaner, but I wouldn't be able to show you all the fancy, fancy pictures. So there you go. So yeah, again, I'm again, slight lag delay between, you know, there you go. Them and what I'm actually watching. So, uh, again, anybody in chat room has questions, feel free to drop them in. Again, I'm, I'm probably seeing them. A you're probably going to hear my answer a little bit later than you know we're actually going to do it. So, let's see. Okay, good stuff. Um, everyone apparently is really happy to see, see my aunt Martha uh, in chat, <laughs> which is a thing. Uh, so there you go. Yep. Uh, good stuff. Oh, yeah. Ian Mitchell says, yep, it says lie, but there's rebuffering a fair amount. Sorry, guys. That's the medium. Um, like I said, if I stop using OBS, it'll probably kick it all out. Um, and I'm like, eh, I'm only going to be here for a little while anyways. Hopefully, um, you guys can stick around with me and, and hang out. Otherwise, next time, I guess I know not to use um, a third-party program to like, show fancy photos. Um, it's just not, not worth it, apparently, as far as like, a stream goes. That's, you know, that's the learning experience in life. So, uh, let's see. Um, as far as other things going on, um, I'm really having a good time writing Adventures on Terror 3. Um, great, great story for me. Um, and I don't really know how to, how to write. I, I don't know how to write for like a specific audience or something. It's just, I, I love these stories. I love little BG and now I try to write the story that I find entertaining. Uh, so I, I incorporate things from my personal life, um, anecdotes about family or friends or like culture and community. Um, but also like just experiences. And I try to make it as fun as interesting as possible. Um, at the end of book two, you kind of saw that the main character got put into jail. There's a whole section about dealing with that. And of course, he goes on more adventures. Um, I will spoil that. You know, Sonia does come back as a major character in 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 book three, uh, so you see more of her. Um, some other characters go away for a little while, and hopefully they'll be back in like book four or, or later on down the line in the series. Um, but as soon as I'm done writing book three in Adventures of Terror, I'm going to go and write book two and three of Project Alpha. Uh, get those all settled away. I might write a, a little, sh a few short stories in the meantime, um, just to you know help. Uh, keep the creative juices going also just like get those little story nuggets that have been laying in my brain for too long um, out on on out in the world so there you go um folks seem to like the cover art um wow that is that is a pretty good delay i'll have to admit between the, the, the time that i say it and the time that it's showing up on facebook live there's a significant like delay there uh and that's that is what it is so some good folks um i will you know, I forgot to write down some people's names. So I'm going to write them down before I forget. So that I can give away prizes. Just like I said it was. So, so far we generally have Gabriel Wathrig. And Aaron Roland Holloway, who are winners just because they were nice enough to show up and comment uh on, on stuff and be entertaining uh so thanks guys i'd give something to my aunt martha but um you know she can always get free stuff for me i guess 
Uh, let's see. Love the cover. Beta readers. You stole my cover. I, I, I well, I think I missed something. Um, yep. <laughs> Did I, I, I think, I think Charles is actually annoyed, uh, in chat. He says that I, I actually stole his cover. I think I warned him that I'm also doing like this, this, this scene, uh, that gladiator scene on the cover, right? I've had that, that cover for months, uh, or I should say for weeks. It's been a little over a month. Um, the audiobooks for the series generally come out about um, three, like usually about a month, month and a half maybe, from the time that that book is actually published. It can be more than that depending on how Amazon does it, but it takes um, usually about a month to to do the audiobook recording. Um, and then it's usually a couple of weeks till um, um, Audible will actually approve it. And if it doesn't approve it, then I just take it back to my audiobook producer, my narrator, Jill Smith, and have, you know, make corrections or whatever. Um, but there you go. I know some other authors put out their audiobooks and their ebooks at the same time in their print version. I'm just not that organized, I think. Like, honestly, I, I'm so excited to put out the book when it's finished that I, I have a hard time holding off <laughs> uh, from putting it out until, like, the audiobook is done, which could be, again, like another month, sometimes two, depending on the schedule of the narrator. Um, so there you go. Uh, Charles Dean said it's his, 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 his ready to go. Uh, sorry, buddy. I can't. Hey, look, man, Charles, I can't. Charles and Charmy is, is, is kind of annoyed that he thinks I stole his cover. I can't look, dude. I, I, I've been working with a different cover artist. I knew this might be an issue when we were talking about Gladiator scenes. I'm like, my Gladiator scene comes to the end of my novel. I know his is doing stuff earlier. I don't know that we're just too similar in thinking. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, Gabriel Rathwig. That's one of the end end sections of the novel, like the, the big Coliseum thing. It's a bigger thing at the end. Uh, the first two acts, you know, different entirely. I think that's more of like a third act kind of thing that happens in the story. So yeah. Um, is it spoilery? Maybe, but I think, I think of it as like a tease, like this is something that's going to happen. It's kind of cool. Come read the story, uh, so that you can read it, you know, read about it. Uh, let's see. Nicholas O'Gran. Hey, Nicholas O'Gran. Hey, um, welcome to the, the, the stream, man. Um, nice to see so many great people here. There you go. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, yeah, great stuff here. So everyone in chat, yeah. And again, the things I'm saying this moment, you will hear in, in a couple minutes, apparently. Uh, so that that is the thing. So nice to see everybody who's watching and seeing. Um, it's nice to have so many people who are so supportive of... Um, I think the, this part of my life, uh, and this is definitely a huge, huge part of my life uh, as far as like the time I spent every single day doing this. Uh, it's, it's reading, uh, it's mostly reading. Uh, then it's also writing reviews and doing the podcast thing every single week and writing. Um, and, and honestly, I'm all honest. I feel, um, happy and I want to, I guess it's key to say blessed, but I, you know, I feel that way because I'm a part of this community, uh, and have the support of so many great people that I know, readers, writers, um, just other community members. Um, this is the best writing community and reading community that I've ever been a part of. Uh, like everyone's so close. We're all happy to like be supportive of each other. Uh, and there are just so many like people, um, people who are, are coming into the genre and being first time writers, um, that, um, we're all super supportive of each other. So, you know, thanks everybody. Uh, yes, you, uh, Jeff Hollingsworth, you in chat room says, dang, I got in late and I missed the dance party. Yeah. Yeah. And you actually did. There was a whole dance party at the very, very beginning of this where I played some nice music. You know, I got the dance thing going on and there you go. Um, if you've seen the podcast before, literally podcast, you, you haven't missed anything particularly new. So Good to see you. All, all kinds of new people. Um, Daniel Kraut. Hey, nice to see you. Jeff Hayes joined. Hey, everybody. It feels like we're having a party and you all came to it. So thanks, everybody, for hanging out and joining. Um, so here we are talking about Ari Mejia stuff. And if you guys are, are just coming a little late, um, I did a nice cover reveal. I'll pop it back up for you guys so you can see the new cover art for uh, Adventures to Hero book number three. Um, again, there, there is a slight lag just because I think I'm using software that's, uh, letting me show pictures, um, and stuff, but it's also creating like a bit of a, a laggy glitch between like when I say things now and when you actually see them by about maybe a minute or two. Um, so you'll have to bear with it. Um, it's, it's just a consequence of like stuff. If I would have known in advance that it was going to be this laggy and buggy, I might've just like 
omitted the, the pictures or like printed one up maybe. And then I showed you, uh, that would have been another, another way to go at this point. So that, that is life. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, see in the chat room, um, Dave Wilmar says, and the better half of the Kraut family, referring to Daniel Kraut, um, that might be Daniello. I think I'm pretty sure it's Danielle. I, I could be mistaken either way. She's a wonderful lady. Had a chance to meet her once um, with, with her husband, Dakota Kraut, at a, at a convention. Um, super smart, super amazing. They just had a baby. So congratulations, you both. Happy to see you here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Bobby Bilston says he's taking a break from harassing others, but he is, he is watching. So he's, he's lurking in chat room. So always happy to see Bobby here, uh, Ian Mitchell, Mitchell as well. So many great things. Um, Dave Walmart is updating people in chat room saying, yes, uh, for those who have arrived, Ramon is wearing pants. That was an actual question that was asked earlier. Uh, if I was wearing pants today, um, it's, it's common knowledge that it could go either way depending on the podcast and how hot it is in California. Uh, so you guys lucked out today that I am wearing PJ pants. Yep. It's totally true. And you wouldn't know if I was not telling the truth. I mean, I could absolutely be totally, you know, bare bummed right now. Uh, and you guys would never know the difference because you know, there you go. Let's see. Um, what else we got here? Oh, um, Takara Mitsumi. Hey, nice to see you in chat. I, I, very nice person. I've uh, never had a chance to like meet them her directly, but good. Uh, it's very, very motivated and 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 fan uh, of of both podcast and the writing, which is always weird to me when to think that people are fans of my writing, because um, I I think of myself as barely a writer. I just I put words on pages and I use uh, Grammarly to make them not as messy. I have a few people read them and uh, sometimes an editor if I can afford it. And then it goes onto the, onto the internets and people will buy it apparently. And that's it. So it's fun to see actually people who are, who are fans. And there's some people who are on Patreon as well, who, who are big supporters. Like they literally give me money to continue to write and give them like advanced uh, versions of the, of the book, which is actually most, a lot of the books actually out on Patreon um, for, for supporters there. Like you just have to read it sooner. Um, it's there, but those guys are, definitely super fans like they they were more than happy to like to tell you their thoughts on their stories on the things you write and it's great to hear like they're really enthusiastic uh so i always appreciate that that level of fandom as well so and it is just kind of weird to think that people like something that i i made up uh let's see what else have we got um bobby bobby Bjornson says just like the cake he said he would mail me it's all a lie I am not Gladys. I, I, I mail cakes when I promise them to go out. So there you go. Uh, to do, who do we have here? Anything else I'm missing? All kinds of good stuff. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, Gabriel says he has an extended invitation on to the pants party. Good stuff there. Uh, so there you go. Uh, there's Dakota popping in uh so we got the whole decrap family watching that's pretty awesome uh i love them both they're both great people uh i think of them all both as my friends uh even though i've only really met them once they're like they're more than my internet friends because like technically they become friends friends if you meet them in real life at least i think that's the rule of the internet um so there you go i so i mean i generally have like a lot of friends in the community just because we're, it's a small community uh, I think of everybody as my friend, <laughs> whether or not they think of me as their friend is a completely different issue, but it's fun to see everybody. Um, let's see a couple of questions here. Uh, Kevin Crenshaw Davis asks, how do you keep reading when burnt? Uh, I am not a hundred percent sure what that means, but I will definitely uh, do my best to answer it. Um, maybe when I'm feeling burnt out, um, reading, um, seven to 10 books a week as like the literary podcast guy is sometimes challenging. Sometimes those novels are not amazing. Uh, sometimes they aren't. Um, but I always think it's my duty, uh, somebody who's supporting the community to continue just to read to the end. Cause there have been several cases where the beginning starts out not awesome, but the rest of the story gets so much better. Um, and those, those are the moments when I'm like, I'm so happy. I just didn't put this down because this got so good. Uh, and, I, and I've talked about them on the Hawkeyes plenty of times, uh, those, those those times. But a lot of times it's the opposite direction where it's like, oh, it didn't start good and it didn't end good either. Uh, and that's just a consequence. And in, in that respect, it's like, oh, I, I think it's like, oh, it's my 
well, it's not my duty or anything, but it's the thing that I do. Like, oh, you t- telling other little bit of readers, like, this didn't turn out great for me. Um, so if you have a limited budget, you may want to avoid it. That's totally up to you, though. If it's on King Kindle Unlimited, hey, go read it anyways. Uh, you might like something that didn't work for me. Um, but it is is the thing, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Noah Barnett says he doubt that it's OBS that's causing the lag. I don't know. I, maybe it could, it could be like just the internet. I, I try to have a uh, high speed internet. Uh, it could just be a consequence of the actual medium itself, where there is just a, a native lag to Facebook Live. Um, I don't see it as much on um, the YouTube. Well, it's not the YouTube Live. It's it's to do Google Hangouts there, um, but you can also see the chat there, and it's usually pretty a uh, pretty fast. I don't know to have a noticeable lag there either. So I'm thinking it just might be the the medium itself. So there you go. Um, Adventures on Terror Book Three comes out when it's finished. Uh, I'm, I'm about ninety eight percent done writing it. It, um, I have about, again, three chapters or three scenes left to write. Um, a couple of them are pretty big. They're like the end stuff, like a big combat scene, like um, some resolution stuff. And then it goes off to editors and beta readers. Uh, so hopefully weeks and weeks. So hopefully not too many weeks. Um, it would make me sad if it still took me like weeks and weeks and weeks to write like the last little bit. But it may. That's life sometimes. That's how authoring goes for me, at least. Um, let's see. Uh, Jeff Hollingsworth asks, um, with you having three active series now, any order you are using to write the next books in each one of the series? Um, I will write that one down so because I don't forget it. But um, not in particular. Uh, I'll to say that I I wrote Adventures in Zero Book 1 and 2. Then I got stuck writing book 3 in my brain like I got writer's block like midway through on a uh, lack of motivation to continue on um, because I, by that time it was like 300,000 words that I've written uh, uh, in the same series in the same universe. So I wrote Project Alpha as kind of a way to, to just like switch my brain a little bit. Um, and also, I'll put it up on screen. I'm using pictures. I might as well use the program um, to kind of switch my brain a little bit, but also to kind of do some experimental stuff. Well, I mean, it's not like experimental in like the larger sense, but for me as a writer, I was reading some um, books on writing, like on piecing and like on structure. And and there's a bunch of stuff I was trying to learn. And I figured, oh, this, I'll write a whole book to try to test it out as an experiment. In addition to like um, in Project Alpha, it's, uh, there's like a whole year's worth of stuff that are put into that novel. Um, I thought like, oh, I'll try that Harry Potter thing. He put, they, you know, J.K. Rowling puts a whole year into it. Why can't I? Uh, and it was a lot more <laughs> interesting to do it that way because Adventures in Terror, the first book, is basically like a couple weeks of time. Um, book two is also, I think, like a month or two. Um, but Party of Alpha is like literally 12 months worth of stuff because it does also um, mirror like the school year, like the college school year that that happens um, for the main character. Uh, and so, um, so they just kind of come out when they come out. So there you go. Um, let's see what else we got. Other questions? Um, Noah Barnett says he's, he has his PD on. It, it's his writing uniform as well. Um, there we go. That's great. Charles Dane says has another question. Um, what beverages does the main character of both your series prefer? Do you imagine they drink different beverages than you? Um, both my main characters in those series, if you actually look at the <laughs> the people, the cover arts, they look surprisingly similar to me in some respects. <laughs> like the uh, uh, so uh, both those char- both those characters are essentially me. I mean, if you look at the main character in book uh, Adventures in Terror, the character's name is Armand, which is essentially your amogram of. Ramon. It's not, it's not a huge stretch there. Um, so, um, but do they drink different drinks? I think they drink different drinks just because one, um, the character in Adventure Terra lives in a different world. So all drinks are different than they are here on earth. Just a different ecosystem, a whole different world. So I don't assume that he can get his hands on a mojito, uh, which is my preferred beverage. Um, uh, on the alcoholic side, um, on the non-alcoholic side, definitely a Rupert float. That is my favorite drink. That is non-alcoholic. And I definitely have more Rupert floats in a year than I do mojitos. That That's definitely for sure. Um, and, and Project Alpha, he's not 21. Um, so he, he probably won't be drinking alcohol. I know it's a weird thing to have. Um, but that, that seems to be the nature of the character. He's he's a little bit of a mama's boy in that he, he loves his mom. And he's just, he, he helps provide for his family because he's one of the only income earners in that family. So, you know, getting alcoholic drinks is not a big priority for him. 
Um, other things are, in, including like, you know, killing monsters and dungeon creatures uh, that eventually pop up. But, you know, so there we go. Um, other questions from chat room. Um, Jeff Hollingworth says, I do what I can to not work from home full time, uh, as I believe I would not have reason to get on my PJ pants. So there you go. Uh, I That is a thing. I, I don't think I've left my house. Um like for any other than to go to the movies in like the last like six months, like I don't travel very much anymore. Like going to work was kind of the reason I got out of the house in the first place. And I've loved every minute of not going outside. I'll be honest. Uh, working from home is, has been amazing for me. Uh, mostly because I get to spend more time with my wife. Um, she has a work, work, um, odd work schedule and that's every single, she works as a, as a adjunct professor at a couple colleges over here. Um, and so her schedule every every semester is different because she works at several different colleges. And so that schedule varies. And so um, me being at home um, full time, basically um, allows us to spend the heck of a lot more time, just like hanging out, going to the movies, going to dinner um, or just, you know, watching television together. And it's, it's been a lot more enjoyable just because we have time now before I was, before I started writing full time, I was working two jobs myself as like a daytime in the sub as a sub teacher and then nighttime as a janitor. And so mixing our schedules that way was, was harder on, on the marriage. And this is much more fun for me. So there you go. Uh, let's see who else we have. Uh, Gibber Wathogas. Do I like Grammarly? Yeah. Grammarly is great. Um, I think the full version is probably not suitable for most people. Like you can get away with like using Grammarly on the free version. I think it'll get a lot of the mistakes that you use. Um, but at this point, um, I actually pay someone else to use Grammarly for me because it is a total pain in the butt. Um, and just as, as, as editing goes, all editing is a pain in the butt, which I'm more than happy to pay someone else to do um, because it is it is so mind-numbingly tedious um, to, to like go through it like line by line by line like four or five times to find all the mistakes. Um, including like using Grammarly, which is very thorough. It is just super tedious to like cluck on a thing and say, change, not change, change, not change, or like think about the story like that. So I'm more than happy to to have somebody else do that kind of stuff for me. And I think uh, a lot of the more um, other authors who are, like, are more proficient at writing than me do the same thing because it helps them to be more productive because they, they write the story and then they hand it off to some editors or beta readers to like make it better and to clean it up. Uh, but at the same time, while those people are doing that, they're writing something different. They're writing the next book in their series or the next series entirely. Uh, and so the, that helps them to be more more productive. So there we go. Uh, Dakota Groton Charm says, he makes his least favorite characters drink Zima. That is cruel, man. Uh, Dakota, that is super, that is super cool. Okay. Let's see. Um, William Walker and chat says he wished he could keep one theme and write. Um, J.R. Hadley says, don't see yourself short army here. Oh, that's very nice of you, man. Um, Ian Mitchell tags truffle de Renzo. <laughs> I guess he's trying to pull more people into chat. Um, Gabriel Rathok says he loves some Zima with a Jolly Rancher. How old is he? That, uh, that might date you, man. Um, that totally might date, uh, date how old you are. I think we're the same age though. So that, that also dates me. Um, so there you go. That might be a good question. Like how old do people think I am? Um, I'm hoping it's, it's younger than I actually am. Uh, so there you go. So all kinds of good stuff happening in, in chat room. And again, uh, folks who are watching this recorded, you missed out. Cause this has been really fun for me. Um, we're going at about 43 minutes now uh, of this going and it's been going pretty fast. Um, for me, at least I love talking to people and I honestly, my only thing is like, I wish I could see all these people. Like I really do wish I could see like them talking in chat, like physically, I could see their cameras. I could see their, their faces. Cause to me, that's a much more amazing interactive structure. That's, that's probably why. And I enjoy doing, um, author interviews on the literary podcast side. Um, because I get to actually see my favorite authors. I get to like, talk to them. Uh, I get, or I get to, sometimes I'll do um, video chats with fans from Patreon. Um, like that's one of the rewards that I think it's like the six level level and above. Um, when you do Patreon, that's one of the rewards I offer, like talking to fans of, of the actual things that I write. And they're always so fun. Like I've never had a bad fan chat because they're enthusiasts and they're, I mean, they have to be enthusiasts if they're saying, here's money, write me something fun. Uh, so that's kind of an inherent in that, but it's always fun to talk to fans or anybody like that. Uh, let's see. There we go. Uh, I don't know if I can, uh, Charles is asking if he can hop in the video with me. I have no idea, man. I've never tried to do like somebody else hopping in video. Um, so I don't have an answer for you, dude. Uh, let's see. 
Aw, Dakota says that the crowds had to leave the stream because the baby was crying. So that is sad. Uh, that is unfortunate because I love them both. And uh, crying babies don't bother me. I say that uh, not as a parent, obviously. I don't have kids. Uh, so that's probably the reason they don't bother me as much. So there we go. Um, I, but Jen, I don't actually know if I can invite somebody else to be in the live stream at the same point. Oh, oh, there it is. There's the video URL for folks who are looking for it. Oh, well. good to know. I, I don't know. Um, so like I said, usually when I have other people on the show, um, literally podcast, I'm using Google Hangouts to, to have them in the video at the same time with me. I saw some other people recently doing um, a Facebook Live where they had more than one person on on the stream. I don't know if they were using a third party as well, like a third party product. Um, I don't know if this one has the inherent ability to, to do it. Maybe I can give somebody the, the stream key and see if they join in. Uh, I guess I could try that out. We'll see if that works. Um, it could also be very dangerous. I don't know who's going to be using that secret, secret information. So let's see. Nope, I, I can't find it now. It's actually, I think it's hidden for me on purpose. Um, I don't know if I can actually use it. So that's the thing. So um, there we go. There we go. Okay, so um, any more comments in chat? Um, more than happy to talk to you folks. Again, uh, the, the things I'm saying currently to you have a little bit of lag time. So if I don't answer your questions right away, that's the reason why it's not that I'm trying to ignore you. It's that the, I think there's a native lag to, to that sometimes, at least in combination of using the software that I'm using, unfortunately. Okay. I know. Um, I'm getting all kinds of private messages saying the lag is killing this thing. And I'm like, I know I can't fix that. Uh, so that is what it is. Um, so it looks like um, a lot of these conversations have dropped out a little bit. Um, oh, look at all these people feet saying such nice and amazing things. Um, Takara saying in chat, she loves the kick-ass characters in my stories. He's a half-wise dragon who doesn't take uh, stuff from anybody. She's really enjoying. Oh, wait. Oh, my. Oh, sorry. I miss reading that particular comment. Um, all right, Mihi, your character kick ass in my liberty story so she's writing a story she has a character i think named after me who's a half-wise dragon who doesn't take stuff from anybody she's really enjoying it. i'm actually enjoying looking forward to reading that book uh she's mentioned to me a couple times uh uh so looking forward to that so great stuff uh let's see what else we got here uh lots of love here good things let's see ronald jones says it's like an author grouping on other authors live streams yeah uh, lots of like authors here hanging out. Uh, Takara Mitsumi says, uh, what program do you use to put pics on your live stream? It's called OBS, Open Broadcast System. Student Open Broadcast Studio, that's what it is. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice streaming program. Um, it helps, helps you re record live or, or uh, stream um, or just to record it. And you can add a bunch of like scenes to it, like pictures and soundtracks and whatever else. I incorporate it with like just screen capture. It's a screen capture features to do my whole podcast thing. Really easy to use. You can check it out if you want to do your own kind of thing. So there you go. Um, what else we got here? Um, dude, Armand Ramon never caught that. Ah, oh, I see Dave Wilmarth again. Kind of a delay uh, saying he never caught Armand and Ramon are the same or just anagrams. So there we go. Uh, Gabriel Rothwick says, what type of root beer? He likes IBC for the win. Am I kind of uh, um, an a and man myself? Um, just because, um, I, I, and this harkens way back to my before I was born. My, uh, it's a family story that um, when I was in the womb, um, my dad used to drive for like two hours uh, to get a and root beers for my mom. Um, and... and and apparently that's the reason that I enjoyed that particular brand of root beer and, 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 and ice cream so much was because my dad used to drink, drive all that way just to get my mom uh, root beer floats that she was craving while pregnant with myself. So there you go. Family stuff. Uh, Charles is being kind of mean in the chat. No, I'm just kidding. He's just being himself. He's saying his desire to read the next book of that series drops significantly. <laughs> um, again, sorry, dude, I didn't. 
I didn't mean to like poke your thing. He, I think a lot of his next book has to do with that. I, I mean, I know for sure it does, but I don't want to spoil things for anybody. So the, the fact that my end thing kind of does something similar, maybe I know they're not the same stuff. Cause I, I think I've read versions of them. They don't, they're not really that that's similar that it's happened. It'll both be in, in the Coliseum, which is a very common trope for fantasy in general. Um, so it's not really, I'm, I'm not trying to copy anybody, but I did tell him that. And in, in, when I was writing, like, I think I'm doing something like this in my own thing. Um, you know, just a heads up. So there you go. Uh, there you go. We got some folks dropping out of chat at this point. Good stuff there. Uh, yeah. Dave Omar says he gives his stuff to Jay Taylor to grind through finding his 1000 mistakes. Great stuff. Um, so good for you. Uh, Emily Jensen, Jinnaman, Jin- Emily Jinnaman Rose. There you go. Hey, Emily. Nice to see you in, in chat. Thanks for coming to hang out. Um, listen to me ramble on about this is kind of turned into the little RPG stream as you know, as little as much as for, for, for our Amy here. And that's mostly because I think I'm, I'm a fan first. I'm always going to be a fan first and a reader first and a reviewer first. Uh, then I, I'm a podcaster and then an author. And so that author thing comes at the end, even though I'm super enthusiastic about my own stuff, it's the thing I talk the least to most of because there's so many amazing authors in our genre that are coming out with things. Um, I know Tasha just came out with his own novel, um, which is super amazing. I loved it a lot. I, I really did enjoy it. Um, I, I loved his main character a ton. Um, and, and it's just, for me, uh, being a fan is, is more important than promoting my own stuff. I mean, my own stuff pays the bills now. It's, it's definitely a part of my life. Um, and I, I love everybody who, who takes the time to, to read it and to review it, whether it's the uh, Adventures in Terra. See, here's the picture thing, uh, or the Project Alpha thing, um, or hopefully the new book when it comes out. Um, but for me, I'm always like, I love talking about other things because there's so many great stuff in our genre and I can't help, um, but show that love whenever I talk about my own stuff, because without that other stuff, without those other authors, without the, the giants in which I'm my shoulder, I'm standing, whose shoulders I'm standing on. If that's how that phrase goes, I would never be where I am. Like I, I generally would never have thought of writing if I hadn't talked to other people who were amateur writers, like people like Alaron or Travis or any, any of the other dozen people I've talked to in other interviews where they're like, Oh no, yeah, I'm, I'm, I learned something else. Writing is weird for me. And, and they, they all do it because of a passion. And I kind of found the inspiration saying, Oh, if they can do it, why can't I? Um, and eventually I did. And that's where I am now. So that those guys are amazing. So I always love talking to them about, about the genre in general. Uh, let's see. Gabriel Wathick says he's not going to lie. He, this is way more fun than he thought it would be. I, I don't know what to say to that. Uh, thank you. So thanks, man. Um, Jeff Hollingworth says, uh, are you going to Dragon Con this year? Absolutely. I have tickets. Um, uh, I have uh, hotel reservations. I'm going to be there for, I think, like four or five days. Um, so I'm trying to get the whole thing in. Um, it, it's, it, it relates to my writing stuff. So I think it counts as a maybe tax deduction. Either way, I'm having a good time. Uh, I think last year was so amazing getting a chance to talk to um, authors, little bit authors, and having a booth there was really fun because it be- also re- became a place where fans could come in and talk to us. And so it was really fun to just see people talk to like Blaze Corvin or, or, or anybody else who was there. Um, Dakota Kraut was there. We actually have a whole video of like that whole thing. You could check out. Um, on our YouTube page, you can search for like Dragon Con, um, and there's a whole like video clip thing I did, super fun. But I'm definitely gonna go do it again. Um, I know Dave Wilmarth is gonna be there, so I'm hoping to have a chance to just like chat with him and have a beer and hang out with people. Maybe maybe do a live stream on Facebook. Uh, that's smoother than this, hopefully. Um, but that's another one. Oh, Jay Taylor joined chat. Hey man, good to see you, buddy. Let's see. Yeah, um, yeah, it's expensive. So yeah, uh, great stuff there. Uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry. Jay Taylor did miss the cover reveal. I'll drop it up anyways just because it's going to come up again um, before the, it's all done. So, oh, Camilla Richards also tapping in to join us in chat. So thanks a lot for hanging out. Um, Camilla's a really nice lady as well. So great people there. Yeah. Um, I, I will show it again, Jay. Don't worry. He's in, he's in chat demanding show that cover again. Um, like, you know, like he's handing out dollar bills. Uh, to me to show to show it off uh, uh so there you go i know uh noah barnett sorry in, in chat room is saying maybe i should switch to youtube hangouts and i'm like yeah i thought about that 
but I didn't do this time because I want to try something different um, just specifically for this page because I feel bad about it, but I, I honestly neglect the <laughs> R.A. Mejia author page like a ton because um, I, I devote a ton of time to the Little Everybody podcast and the writer side of things like, oh, I just kind of write things and I put it on Patreon um, and I don't post a ton on the Facebook page just because there's not a ton of posts until like a book comes out. There isn't like I can do cover art reveals. I can show off new artwork um, and I can try to communicate with the community a little bit. Um, it's just like my, my author side of my thing is like it's 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 a much smaller th- part of my like my daily structure. Um, so I sometimes I feel bad about neglecting the page, uh, which is why I wanted to do this specifically here, because you guys are special. You guys are supporters and I love you guys, too. Uh, so thanks. So good stuff. Gabriel Rothwig. Okay, looks like we're coming up on just about an hour. I'm probably going to end the um, like the part where I'm recording, just because an hour is a pretty good amount of time. I don't want to kill too many people's stuff, but I'll still hopefully be streaming to Facebook, and it'll save there as well. I just there we go. Oh yeah, that's uh um okay. Charles Dean in chat. He he wants me to show off his cover art just so people know that he thinks that I'm totally stealing from him. Uh, so I'm going to show that off for you guys. So that'll probably be one of the last things I do just because he's being, he's being Charles about it. Uh, so you can see like that's, there is totally, um, there's totally a, a convenient thing. There. So there's his, there's mine. There is his again. So there, there is, there's, there's a total similarity I can't help that, dude. I didn't. I did not see your cover in advance. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have copied it. But you know, things in coliseums have been around for a while, dude. But yeah, there, there kind of is a thing. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to steal your art, though. Like we do have different cover artists. Um, I think we might have just been looking at the same um, stuff from the internet where we, where we were like, oh, can you do something like this for our coliseum thing? I can't help that, dude. Uh, I, that that would be it, though. Uh, so I'm gonna end like the stream here. Uh, I hope that you guys have had a good time uh, chatting and hanging out with me. I, I've definitely had a time, a great time hanging out with you guys. Um, I know the stream is going to continue on for a little bit longer after I actually click stop streaming here. Um, so I want to tell you that I, you guys have been amazing um, taking the time to, to listen to me chat and stuff. Uh, and again, the video will be here for you guys to watch from the very beginning where you can watch me do some amazing kind of dance moves. If you guys want to go back to the very, very beginning, I know. Um, and there are problems with the stream. Hopefully next time I can get that fixed. Um, there you go. Like I said, I encourage you guys to watch it. I, I, if you're listening to this now, you probably already watched it. So there you go. That's, that's how much I, I enjoy it. So uh, I'll end off with some great music and a little dance moves for you.